How many videos have you watched about acrylic pouring? And how many times have you told yourself, I can do that? But then reality sets in and you tell yourself, I don't have space in my room, in my house, or in my apartment. Well, I'm here to tell you, you do, and I'm gonna show you how. You don't really need a lot to start pouring. Three square feet is all you need. Three square feet is the size of a laundry basket. That's the size of a small end table, a large microwave, or a big potted plant. It's just slightly bigger than the box for the game of life. Those three square feet don't have to be on the floor either. They can be on a table, on a desk, on a shelf, or even under a bed. Don't believe me? Let me show you. Now the first thing I did was find a container that I could use to do my paint pouring. I went to Walmart and I made sure I found a container that wasn't too tall or deep and not too big. Again, I realize you don't have a lot of space, so what we're trying to do is allow you to pour a couple of different size canvases in this container. And I found this container that has a lid, and it was $5.88 or so. You can probably find something like this at your local thrift store or online at Amazon. I'll leave some links below. But what I like about this is one, it is flat on the bottom. So when I get my canvas and I put my thumbtacks in the bottom, it can just sit on the bottom and it stays flat. It doesn't have ridges, it doesn't have big dips or things like that. Two, I wanna make sure that it can be level. Now in this one, just sitting on my table, it is level, which is awesome. Now you really wanna measure both ways, but it's actually level both ways. And so I can use this to pour. This is an eight by 10 canvas. If I turn it this way, I could actually pour two eight by 10 canvases together. This is 24 inches long and 16 inches wide, and it's about six inches tall. You don't want any more than six inches because then you're having to reach down in and you don't have, it's not really convenient. But this will hold an 11 by 17 canvas and obviously anything smaller than that. The other important thing about this is you want one that has a lid because ultimately I'm going to say that you really want two. You want one to pour in that you can put the lid on and the lid seals. And then you want one that you can put on top and then they don't take up any more space, they're just right on top of each other. So you have one to put your supplies in, and we're only gonna use a, sh a small amount of supplies, one pouring medium, one set of paint, some plastic bags, cups, thumbtacks, things that I'll show you in uh, the video linked above, and then one for your paintings as you paint and then also as you dry. Now, if you're going to paint on tiles or something like that, you might want to get one of those metal drying racks that you can just set right straight inside here and then put the tiles on that. You don't want the tiles to be flat or else you get a ton of paint around them and we don't want that. So ultimately you're going to want a place to paint and you're going to want a place to let your paintings dry. Now that can be the same place, for example, on a table like this. You could paint on the counter like you see here and see how it's about the same size as my microwave. You could paint on the floor. Normally, I think most people are gonna be painting on a table or counter and then moving their paintings out of the way while they dry. So what I recommend is you get a place like this for painting. Now, you're still gonna to need to do your drop cloth so you don't get paint everywhere. Uh, I'm just showing you how to use the container. Where you paint, you wanna make sure that your surface is level both directions, so that when you put your painting in, it is also going to be level when you use it. And then, so we would paint here, and if I can, I could just leave this here and let it dry. And as I mentioned before, I recommend putting holes on the outside of your container, because the whole idea of drying is it's evaporating water, and you don't want all that water to sit in your container. You want that to all come out, so you need holes, or you need to keep your lid slightly off center so there's a place for the water to come out. Now, if you don't wanna leave this on your counter or on your kitchen table, which I'm assuming is most of the time, what we'd do is we'd close it up. And I'm gonna do this with one hand because I have the camera, but we would carefully, keeping it straight, take it to a different location 
to let it dry. And that location, we need to also make sure that it is level. Now I've already verified that it was level, so I know I could put it here, but look, now it's out of the way and nobody's gonna walk into it and I can let it dry for two days or till the next time I want to pour. So another thing you need to worry about when you're pouring in a container like this is this is gonna move around a lot. So if it's dirty, if you've left paint on the bottom there and it's still level, that will keep it from happening. If not, you can take double-sided tape and put it on the bottom of your tacks and then when you put it down it's actually going to stick and it won't move near as much because you don't want to go to move your painting and have it slide over and hit the side and ruin the side or fall into these have divots way on the outside which doesn't affect when I'm pouring but if it goes way to the side that would affect how level my painting is. So just keep that in mind. You want to be very careful moving it or you want to make sure that this is going to stay in place when you do pour. Another thing you can do is just let it sit. For example, here on my kitchen table, let it sit for a couple of hours. In a couple of hours, it's actually going to dry on the sides and dry right here on the corners. And so it's going to be a lot easier to move because on the bottom also it has kind of dried a little bit so the stuff you dripped off is going to hold it in place a little bit better. So that's just one tip when using a container like this. So I know some of you are already doing things like this to be able to pour in the small space that you have. Let me know in the comments below how you're doing it and if there's some tips and tricks that I missed that would really help the community here. For those of you that haven't start pouring and this was one of it, your excuses, that excuse is now gone and it is time for you to paint pour. And this is the video I want you to watch next because it's going to help you get that first pour done.